Hey, this is David from Movation. In this video, I want to show you how to use Google Fonts the right way because this stuff can be quite confusing for beginners, especially because there's so many different ways you can do this stuff. And I want to show you some good practices. And so, of course, first of all, why should you care about using professional font families? Well, that's the same as asking why do you care about user experience design? I mean, most of the web is typography. So it makes sense to care about it, right? Saying you don't care about it is like saying, I don't care about my website. And again, if you want to stand out, you don't want to use the typefaces and font families that everybody else uses. Like Microsoft used Arial for like 20 years on their operating system. So why would you use Arial? If you want to stand out and create your own brand, your own identity, you should care about this stuff. And also you can actually make your documents more digestible, more readable for the reader. And especially in long form, like in long articles and landing pages and product descriptions, there's actually some science behind this. You, you can reduce activation of the corrugator muscle. And that just means that people will become less tired when they uh, take in your content. So th this is really, really important. Now, I will of course le leave uh, the um, resources in the description box down below so you can uh, check out check out all this stuff afterwards now let's go to google font and uh, just open it up like so and the first thing we see are just an overview of the most popular google fonts okay now i have this example snippet this is just from an article of mine with some paragraphs and some headings and i want to apply some of these awesome google fonts to my content and right now there's no uh, font families applied to this so what you see is just the default font of in this case google chrome my browser and so if we go inside here and click on debug mode and we grab my good friend what font this is a, this is an awesome google add-on then i can just hover over all my text and see what's going on okay this is times regular line height okay font size click on this times times bold okay cool really really nice tool now let's go inside google fonts and actually use some of these awesome font families now for our headings, let's just uh, use Lato. That's a really nice one. And let's go over here and click on Quick Use because I like Quick. And I want you to pay attention to this area over here, page load, because we all know that people have no patience for anything. So we don't want to slow our sites down. But look what happens when I start to just add fonts. Look what happens. We get closer and closer to this dangerous area and we don't want that. So we only want to add the font weights or styles that we actually need. In this case for headings, I'm just going to go with bold. Okay, because bold is all I need. Now, if you look down here, look what happens when I add and remove fonts. You see that? So Google takes care of everything for us. We just need to pick whatever we want and then it will take care of everything else for us. Now let's just copy this link tag and insert it inside our head area like so. Okay, and uh, now we also need to go inside our um, our CSS and just add this. Now, Google actually gives us the uh, CSS, so we don't even have to write it ourselves. Like so, just copy it and paste it in. Okay, and now we have Lato. And in order to confirm this, you can go inside here again and use what font. And uh, indeed, we have Lato for both our headings. Cool. Now. Uh, let's uh, find a nice one for our body text as well. So we go back in here and uh, let's go up here and let's use a really nice serif because we is, um, Lato is a sans serif. So let's find a nice contrast. And Laura looks pretty sweet to me. Uh, now, if you click on it, you can actually toggle it open so you can see all the styles. But let's just go over here instead and click quick use. And again, why? what would you use for this uh, for the body text? Well. You always need a normal weight, of course, for the regular text, but you also need a an italic for the uh, mild emphasis and then a bold for a little bit stronger emphasis. And you don't need uh, bold italic. I mean, it, it can use it can look really nice, but if you don't need it, why use it? You can always add them later on. And the more you add, the slower your page. So we don't want to add more than we actually need. So now let's go down here and copy this link tag and insert it inside our head area again. Let's just close this down. And now let's go ahead and apply this to our paragraph. And again, we go down here and just copy the CSS so we can add Laura to our paragraphs like so. Okay, and it looks like it works. Now let's just, for good measure, go ahead and check it out. And indeed it is Laura. Cool. Now, very important. 
when it comes to fallback fonts, the second font you see on this uh, list is just the fallback. So that means that if what, for whatever reason, the person who goes to your site cannot use Lado uh, or Laura in this case and Lado up here, uh, if they can't load in the uh, font package for some reason, then it will revert to the fallback. And that will be in this case, sans serif. That's what Google suggests. Okay. Um, now, I will recommend that you add more than just one. Okay, so I would do for Lato, I would probably just something like Helvetica. That's a uh, system font that a lot of computers have. And let's go down here and add maybe a Georgia. So now what happens, look what happens over here now. If I go ahead and remove Laura, look what happens. Now we have Georgia, okay? So this is a lot better looking than just Serif, if you check, if you compare. So, yeah. Now that's really important. Now you can add as pretty much as many as you want, but you know, add two or three. That should be enough because most modern, at least people who use modern computers and modern browsers, shouldn't have a problem download, downloading these fonts. Not at all. Now I'm really big on performance optimization, and actually this is not a best practice because we just loaded in two link tags with font families, and we can actually combine these into one, and thereby reduce our server load by one HTTP request. Now, right now we have two, and we can combine them and just get, have one, and thereby make our site a little bit faster. And Google makes this so easy for us. So let's go inside here and just click Add Laura to your collection, and go to the front page and find Lato again, and Add to Collection. And then we click on Use. And now you can see we have one stack, and it accumulates the page load. And as you can see, we are still a good deal away from the red area, so that's good. And again, it remembers everything from before, which is just so convenient. And right here we have our entire link tag with both our font families in one request. So let's add it in. And everything should work. Yeah, it does. Cool. So that's just, you know, it all accumulates, right? So it may seem like a minor detail, but at the end of the day, if you always think if you always think about performance optimization, you will end up having much, much faster loading sites. And that's always a good thing. Now, if you want to test out your fonts in a real life scenario before you actually get them on Google Fonts, you can go inside Typecast. And that's actually a part of Google. And now you have a real life um, scenario with an article example where you can just go in and just click and then go over here and change the uh, the typeface and add whatever font you want. And you can do that for all this text and you can adjust the line height, the text size, everything. So that's pretty nice that you can you know test it out and then go inside Google Fonts and grab whatever you want. So that's a pretty nice uh, website. And of course, all these links are in the description box down below. So you can check it out afterwards. And um, yeah, by the way, when it comes to these uh, um, safe fonts or system fonts, okay, uh, let's go inside here and check this out. This is just an overview over uh, the most commonly um, installed system fonts, which means that, for instance, Arial is installed on almost all computers. So that means if you use Arial as a fallback, you can pretty much be 100% sure that people will have that displayed in their browser instead of your main choice, if for whatever reason they can't download your um, your main font of choice, but I wouldn't recommend Arial because first of all, I just really don't like it. I don't don't think it's a very good looking uh, uh, typeface, and also just everybody uses it. So to find something else, right? You can. It's not that difficult to find something better. So uh, let's uh, close this down. And oh yeah, I want to talk about three different methods of importing these uh, importing these Google fonts because you can actually do that in uh, three different ways. You have HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so let's go inside Google fonts. And right here, what we have used so far is the standard method, the HTML link tag method. But you can also use the CSS import method and the JavaScript method or the web um, font loading method. And this is something you know, the JavaScript is something you would use for really customized um, needs. Like if you want to only load in specific characters of a typeface, or maybe you want to use some asynchronous loading on some stuff, then you can pretty much take 100% control over your font loading with JavaScript. But that's for a little bit more advanced users. I mean, it's not like it's not brain surgery or anything. And I will cover this in future videos. But it's not something that most of you are going to need, at least not in the beginning. In the beginning, just learn the basics of good typography. Okay. So the import method is kind of interesting because if you go to Google's own beginner's guide, uh, getting started, they don't even mention the CSS import method 
So I don't know what that means, but they only talk about the HTML and the JavaScript. So maybe that means they don't want you to use import. And uh, if you go to Stack Overflow and search for this stuff, you can see that most people recommend against using the CSS import method because you can, can risk breaking your fonts in specific uh, browsers and on certain devices. So the link method, the link tag method is a more uh, safe, it's the safer choice. And that's what most people recommend. Okay. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, Another thing is that you can, of course, um, host your own font on your own server. Um, and uh, now there's a pros and cons of that. Now, a lot of people don't want to stream font through uh, the CDN of Google, you know, the content delivery network, because, the, you know, they are afraid that Google will track them and, you know, you know, nobody likes the, this uh, Big Brother thing. But at the end of the day, if you use Google Analytics, if you use, if you use uh, YouTube, if you have a YouTube channel, all that stuff, they're tracking your every move anyways. I mean, I maybe you should worry about this. I don't know. But the advantage of using uh, the advantage of using um, uh, the Google CDN to host your font is that if a font is updated, that will automatically update on your site. And actually, they do update their font families quite often. For instance, Railway was recently updated with like 12 new styles. So you won't get that if you host your font yourself. But you can do it. It takes a little bit more work to set up. Um, and it requires self-maintenance. But if you want to do that, you can certainly do that. And I can cover that in depth in the later videos if, if any of you are interested. But you can also go to this page, Google Web Fonts Helper. And this is for specifically for people who want to host their own fonts. And then you can just go inside here. This, these are all the Google fonts. And just click on one. And then they will help you with all the CSS and addressing browser compatibility issues and all that stuff. Um, so you don't need to do so much work. And then you can just download the entire package and upload it on your server. So it's not that difficult, but it's much, much more convenient to just use the uh, link tag method, uh, in my opinion. And that's what I would do for the most part. Now, there's one thing that you need to look out for, uh, which is something that I forget way too often. And that is that if you have some of these Google fonts installed on your system, Look what happens if I go inside here and let's say that I wanted to use something like uh, Meriwether for my for my some of my uh, uh, content. So let's go inside here. And as you can see, this is a Google font. And let's click over here, use. Now, let's say that I forgot all about, um, oops, that actually didn't work. Let's go back uh, like so. Okay, now we're in, inside Meriwether. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to use this but I forget about loading it in, loading it in, inside my link uh, or my head area. And I just went inside here and just remove this and do Meriwether. Look at my text over here. So something happened. And what happened? Is this actually Meriwether? Or is it something else? Is it a fallback font of some sort? Well, let's check it out. No, it's Meriwether. But how can that be since I don't actually load it inside my head area well because I have this installed on my computer. If I go inside Illustrator and go up here and search, you can see indeed I have it installed. So you can easily fool yourself or trick yourself into thinking that things are going to work. But the problem is that it, the end user, if you are not loading in Meriwether here at the head area, they are not going to see Meriwether. They're going to see whatever fallback you were using. Like let's say you were using Serif. So what they're going to see is this, okay? not Meriwether. And as you can see, there's quite a big difference between the two. First of all, Meriwether is a much, much nicer type. It's much, much more reader friendly, but also in its very nature, it's bigger compared to the same font size on Serif. So if you look at, at this, um, you have 21 pixels. But when I remove Meriwether, it looks like Serif pretty much is like three or four pixels smaller, right? But when we add it back in, it's much, much bigger. So this is a big problem. You need to keep this in mind. You need to remember to load in your fonts because other people are not going to have this on their systems. Uh, very few people have uh, these Google fonts installed uh, by default. Oh, well, not by default, but very few people actually even know how to install fonts on their own systems. Now, if you want some inspiration, you can go inside this awesome page called Beautiful Web Type. And they actually use specifically um, this guy Chad specifically uses Google fonts for this awesome uh, presentation here of just this is just an illustration of what you can do with typography, right. But if you look at this, these are actually all Google fonts. Okay, these are all free fonts. And the thing is, it's not really the typefaces and the font families that you pick that matter. What really matters is what you do with them. And so but it's just nice to know that you know, you can really make this look awesome, right. And, and when you just put a little bit of effort into it, 
So this is really nice for inspiration, but you can find plenty of other inspiration on, on the web for this. And of course, there's also a service like Typekit, which I'm going to cover in later videos, um, which is a uh, has much, much more, a much bigger archive of professional font families, much, much richer families. But, you know, Google is pretty nice. A lot of people don't like Google for whatever reason, because they're free maybe. But honestly, I think they have a lot of awesome fonts. And I will make future videos and articles talking about uh, which one I would suggest that you use for specific uh, types of purposes and all that stuff. So um, yeah, that's for future videos. So to sum everything up, most users should use the link method to import fonts from Google. If you want complete control, you can use the JavaScript method and also don't add fonts that you don't need. It just slows your page down and you can always add more later on. Combine your font family requests inside your link tag so you only have one tag instead of two or three, right? To save uh, page loading or increase page, page loading. Use safe system fonts as fallback fonts, at least a couple, okay? At least two. Don't compromise your typography because your website is mostly typography. The web is pretty much one big typographic medium, okay? So it matters what you do with it. You should care about it. Typefaces and fonts are only one of the many elements of typography, but it's really important to get right still. I hope this has been helpful to you. And uh, if it has, let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of good stuff coming up in the future about web typography, front end development, user experience design, and of course, generally performance optimization. So uh, yeah, have a good day.